to show Mantis living something like this with a stick as its only friend. Mine live in a Mantis garden and today I'm going to show you how to make one. First thing we're going to need is a jar and the first thing we're going to do with this jar is get rid of this lid because we don't want to seal our Mantis in there. What we do need is this side, this little clip that comes with the jar. I'll right, take that off, put it to one side. Now Mantis spend most of their life hanging upside down from the top of the jar and for when they want to shed and when they want to just mooch around doing nothing, staring at the world and terrifying everybody. So what I do to give them this lid is fiberglass sheeting. This is 16 by 18 ohms per inch and we're going to pop it over the top and then we're going to put this lid, this clip, back on. Give it a nice pull, make sure it's nice and tight, like so. And then simply shop round it until we have a nice little lid of netting that a mantis can hold on to. And when we've done that, we can throw this aside and start with the good stuff. As for the good stuff, the first thing we're going to need is some substrate. Now, I mix my own substrate and I'm using cocoa fiber, which is this stuff that you can get from a reptile shop or a pet shop. Failing that, you can always find it online. And this is just general peat-free compost and some sphagnum or tamarisk moss in my case chopped up into finely little pieces and now we get to mix them all together to make our substrate which is the fun part give them a good thorough mix make sure there's no chunks or little balls of compost which is quite possible well, that's the usual case when you buy compost this is nice and dry so I don't want it wet otherwise we'll get it all over our hands and then we'll get it all over everything else when we're trying to do stuff so there's a nice dry substrate there now I'm also going to add in a little bit of leaf litter and this is a dried Himalayan balsam leaf that I've had in the oven to dehydrate it and I'm just going to Give that a quick scrunch up there, and this will help provide nutrients to the substrate and also provide dinner for some of the little friends that I'm going to be adding soon. Now we've got our substrate, and there it is, looks quite nice, very leaf littery, jungle flory, woody, foresty, and all the other E words I can think of. And we're going to pop that there and we're going to stick a bit in the jar. So let's get a handful or two here, pop it in the jar and with it being dry it's not stuck to the jar. Now one thing I must say to you is when you do this we've got to have a front and back of the jar. Now all these jars come with a seam where the glass has been blown. Make sure the seam is either A to the back or to the sides because there's two of them on this particular jar so I'm going to keep them to the sides so the back is going to be here and that's our front so what we're going to do is build up the back to give us a more three-dimensional look of it and get a bit of depth and it'll make the jar actually look bigger and prettier now that's probably enough for the substrate. You can put a drainage layer in, but I don't bother with a mantis because when the mantis has grown out of this size of a jar and I move him on to a bigger jar, 
I will probably remake this so they're in it for three to four weeks and then I'll make a new one because it's fun to make them and I enjoy doing it so there we've got it once we've got that I'm gonna give it a good old spray again this is a fine mist spray got it off eBay nice and cheap now we've got that substrate nice and squishy you can see here where the substrate's wet I'm gonna get that about halfway yep starts coming there you can see the darker areas where the substrate's getting nice and moist not too wet but moist and what I'm gonna do now is give it a quick wipe down let's get rid of this moisture from the front and sides of the jar on the inside then we don't get it everywhere when we disturb it in a moment let's do other things we add our bits and pieces now when I make a manatee's garden I do not do not plan it at all I have no idea what I'm going to do next so I like to have a few bits and pieces to hand I have a couple of sticks nothing too amazing these ones are after a conifer it was dead I found it and I thought I'm stealing those sticks and I put a bit of sandpaper over here and there just get some different colors on it and the little novels look pretty good uh, same again with this one I thought it looked pretty awesome and we're gonna need these for the mantis to get to the top of our netting so we can hang upside down and uh, be a mantis and I've also got a selection of moss from my moss bins uh, lots of different moss in here I've got thread moss um, tamarisk moss I've got some I don't know if you can see that I've got some uh, liverwort here and some feather moss and uh, can't remember what that moss is but I know the moss and here's some rocks we found on a walk in the woods and quite nice rocks as you see there they're all covered in in moss already so that helps nice big chunky mossy rocks and they've got different moss on so we've got thread moss it's got star moss on it so I'm probably going to be using those this all gives us different colors with the different mosses and I've got a tray of plants that I found also walking in the woods and this is uh, bittercress and several little ferns here that we may use uh, I'm not quite sure on the species of this fern but it's, it's a common uh, very small common fern you find in England right but we're not going to bother with the plants yet first thing I'm going to do is have a look at it and figure out what I want to do with looking what I've got um, I think we'll start with this nice chunky rock because we want a centerpiece so I might even make a dual level so I might need some more substrate in a minute I think I'm gonna make a dual level because I like these rocks a lot so I'm gonna put a couple in and I'm just gonna stuff them into the substrate there to get them buried if you can see that probably not and I'm gonna get a little more substrate because I want to build up the back there a little bit so we've got two levels on here which now negates the need for my uh, high at the back and I'm gonna give that a spray because we want this quite moist because of the what we're going to put in it I'll give it another wipe so I can show you otherwise you won't be able to see anything neither will I which is probably not a good start for somebody making a terrarium so there we go and I've got two levels here I've got this upper level and this lower level down here and for this 
I think we'll call it a day with the rocks. And uh, let's let's have some of this nice thread moss. It's lovely moss. This nice and green, nice and fresh. This has been soaked. When you pick moss and you collect moss from outside, you've got to make sure that this is all good and clean and soaked and washed with clean water. And then you don't bring any hitchhikers home with you, like the old centipede or millipede or anything nasty. And uh, we don't want to upset our mantis. So make sure it's nice and washed. And we're going to stuff a bit more moss in here. I'm going to use all this moss, I think, because I quite like it. And now my hands are absolutely full. And here I have some nice little wart, which is a great plant. It does spread like crazy. Now, I'm going to put that in the bottom. Because the reason I'm doing this in the bottom is I want a nice flat sort of area. Because if we're going to introduce things like crickets in here for the mantis to... Uh, lunch on then we don't want them hiding in everything there is now i'll put this little bit of a moss it looks like a little tree um so we, we're gonna we're gonna pop that in here at the front now you firm the moss down and the liver what keep our stones up there like that to give us that extra second level there and so far we have this doesn't look like much at the moment does it uh, so I think what we better do is add a bit of caress let's have a look which one should we have I quite like that one that one there it's nice and small so we're going to use that one for now here's a bit of caress and let's pop that one in between these rocks here which you can't see because you know I'll lean him over a bit like so let's squash this down I might even use another rock but like I say we don't want it too busy and we certainly don't want it busy after the halfway point otherwise you're going to get in the mantis way when he wants to shed his skin and uh, that never ends well so Give that a clean, that's where we've got so far. You can actually see that. Lovely reflection on the glass there. And I'm gonna look for another, another little stone here out of my little collection. I said that again, these little stones were picked up in the forest and then soaked. And all the soil and bits of uh, debris that was on them has uh, all been washed away so i'm going to put that there i think let me have a look yeah in fact i think i might make some more because that looks like a little stone wall building there so i'm going to do that and have that bits of crest coming out of it because that looks pretty cool like that yeah yeah we're getting there. we're getting there see that little stone wall yeah pretty awesome pretty awesome even though i do say myself right now on the top here we're going to have to have room for our sticks, Mantis friend. One of these has to go to the top. So we're going to just wiggle it in here. And it's almost to the top. And I like this one as well. So I think we're going to put them both in. But we don't want to disturb it. And we want to make it so the Mantis can actually hang from these if he feels the need. So I'm going to shove that one in there. Right, so to give us a bit of a, a different, it's like a dead tree at the moment, which is a, a pretty good result. And that's how I'm going to do those, but I'm going to take them out for now. Now I know what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stick the fern in here. One of these little ferns, because I like them. I think we're going to go with this one. And this one comes with its very own little bit of moss and there's even a bit of liverwort there which is pretty handy these are all been uh, quarantined by the way so they're not just popping them in here from nothing and let's just firm that down a little bit like so 
And I'm going to get a bit more of this lovely moss here. You can see that it's really pretty moss. And I'm going to put that on the top here. We're almost covering every bit of soil in here. And so we've got this affair going on. And now we can put our sticks in, which I'm going to one almost straight up. Here we go. Push it in there like that. And we've got a stick there. And I'm going to put this one next to it, facing that way, so it looks like a, a, a trunk of a tree going over there. And the mantis can still hang from this one as well as that. Let's get this, uh, get my handy little tweezers here and uh, pop that if I can. It's being a nuisance. Pop that round there. The eyes in the detail and all that business. And yep, that's not too bad. That's quite nice actually. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, let's push that down a little bit more. There. That liver what wants to come up. Right, now give that a spray again. And uh, guess what? Another quick wipe down. If you can, we can get in there without disturbing it too much. If you've got a nice pair of tweezers like I have, you can always put a bit of kitchen roll on here and get right down to them corners and give that a real good not only that I'm pushing the moss down at the same time get all this up here without disturbing what we've already done and we're cleaning the glass as well all at the same time there we go that's nice isn't it a bit more on this side I think <sighs> yep there's lots more things I could say about the mantis and about these little gardens but I'm going to leave that for another video and we'll just concentrate on making something for your mantis right now. And this is basically what we've got. We pop our lid back on. But before we do that, there is something else you need to add. And these are some little friends that will help keep our mantis garden nice and happy. And these are isopods that better a lot of people know them as wood lice roly polies and all the other millions of names they have and we're just gonna pop these in here and they will eat any dead leaves or bits of insects that your mantis decides to drop and also as you can see them there now where are we there as you can see them mooching around there they're real fun to watch as well and they'll hide in nooks and crannies and with a bit of look they'll breed there and all. Now if your mantis gets a bit snacky you may or may not eat them. Some mantis actually spit them out. They'll pick them up, have a go at them, try to bite them and then they'll go oh this is too hard, don't like that armour and just throw them to the side so it's not too bad. The other thing we need to add to here is springtails. Now springtails are everywhere but your best bet is to actually buy them. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can get springtails from and add them to it. I'm going to add mine later, uh, but this is what they look like. Cute, aren't they? Right. Now, that is just about done. And we can leave that for a couple of days, I think. Let it bed in. And then we can add our mantis. But for now, Let's pop our lid back on, make sure our stick's going all the way to the top, which it is. And then we can put our netting back on here, simply by pushing this clip on and holding this. And there we have it, a mantis garden, which is pretty nice to look at instead of a lolly stick in a 32 ounce cup. If you like this, like and subscribe so I know I should make some more. Cheers.